All right, Adrian, more user submitted content, questions, feedback. My favorite. This one was actually plucked from the interwebs by you and sent mm. my way. We've got a couple for the next few shows, maybe, which is cool. And you texted me this, and I'll read it here off my phone. And this is screenshotted a comment from um, a previous episode of Very Not Random on the BTWB YouTube channel. It says, basically, uh, what are some tips to get people to come to those days? And those days meaning mm. the non-fun days. We can define that in a second. Because this person says, programming quote-unquote fun stuff versus non-sexy movements or workouts. Many people love the beatdowns, but not so much the days of strict pull-ups, Turkish get-ups, etc. So how do I get people in the door on the things that move the needle, but don't exactly fill the parking lot with cars? Well, first of all, I think we need to define what those fun days are, because what you just Agreed. described, strict yeah. pull-ups, Turkish get-ups, I'm like, yeah, I'll sign up for that any day of the week. I know, we I'm thinking kind of the same thing. <laughs> we had the conversation around the 2K row and that sort of thing uh, a right, couple right. episodes back, and, and to me, something like that, the beatdown session, I'm like, ugh, that's the one that I'm <laughs> less inclined to show up for. So I think that's an important point right there, is that every gym is going to have its own culture. And around that culture, there's going to be a certain gravitation towards certain things. Some gyms are going to love coming in and lifting heavy. That's just kind of the culture of the gym. Other gyms, it's going to be, you know, grinder workouts that are more kind of chipper based. That's the culture mm -hmm. of the gym. So first things first is don't you lump do everybody see those. into... I've forgotten about that until you just said that. You're right. You do see those where just everything's a long, grindy, oh, chipper yeah. at Kitchen some places. Kitchen sink every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see right, it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and people love it. Some people yep. love it, but others don't. So I think that's the first important point is to recognize that what you perceive as being fun by the coach may or may not be the same perception the athlete holds or may not be held across the group of athletes. So you're going to find variance there too. That being said, you can tell pretty quickly on a pragmatic level when you put something on the board and usually you have a class of 15 and today you got a class of two. That's a mm -hmm. pretty good indicator that, <laughs> that maybe this is one of those things that is less appealing to your specific population. So, but let's start there. Now, what I was going to say, you, you, were, you were very, maybe this is where you're about to go, you were very um, nice in your, in your <laughs> de description there, right? I mean, fun is different to yeah. each person, and some people may love the strict days, others hate them. Uh, true, the heavy lifting days, all, that's all true. However, you know, if somebody was holding you hostage and forced you to say, given your depth and knowledge of the current CrossFit landscape and what seems yeah. to be en vogue or not, what would you think falls under the realm of the quote-unquote fun stuff most of the time for most people and what falls into the not fun stuff? Uh, good question. I, I would say that there's two primary camps. You're going to have primary camp number one that just wants to lift heavy multiple times a week. That's what they really love to do. And then I think you're going to have camp number two that wants to, quote, feel like they got a good workout and needs to be just kind of ground out a little bit in order Get for them to feel, going. yeah, to feel like they've checked the box, so to speak, yep. for the day. So I think those are the two primary camps. I got to be lifting heavy, maybe more regularly than is necessary, um, and or the group that is, I need to be just ground into dust. Otherwise, I cannot psychologically feel like I got the benefit from the session. And do the filthy I think 50s those are the two every primary. day. Exactly. Yep. 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 No, I, I would I would agree with that. And what's funny is there are some things that both camps might not want to do because both camps oh, might yeah. feel like they, they're not moving the needle. For example, if I could just pull something out of a hat, right? <laughs> randomly, just randomly. <laughs> just just <laughs> happened to be in my mind. 10 by 100 yeah. meter sprints. There you go. That's probably for the people that love the 30 minute death grind session. They're like, what? No way. Like that's nowhere near, you know, the uh, the long suffering that I want. And for the lift heavy crew, there's obviously not a barbell in sight on those days. So, hey, no, thanks. So there's probably also some things that straddle the line that, that both oh, camps would sure. be upset about. And, then, and there'd yeah. only be two people in the class like you stated previously. And I would say something even more 
kind of right down the pipe would be in that in that range as well just something like a 5k run or like we talked about a 2k row something that it doesn't really excite the imagination the on paper 5k run here let me yeah. let me answer a question i hear all the time why should an affiliate owner hear this every now and then? why you know my affiliate programmed a, a 5k run how dare they you know that's yeah. not a creative workout it doesn't need any gear whatsoever it's something I could just do on my own. You know, why am I going to this gym and paying this person to do that? And I'll tell you why. Because you won't do it on your own. That's yeah, why. exactly. Yeah. I mean, yep. so the yeah, wonders of peer pressure every now and then <laughs> of showing up and be like, oh, so-and-so is expecting me to be there at five. I'm going to show up and do this thing. There's just, I know that you could do, there's a lot of stuff that you could do on your yeah. own. But there's a Absolutely. lot of stuff that gets that gets blown off when it's just up to the individual. So that is totally. that is the wonder of the group setting or of, you know, paying somebody else to say, hey, this is what we're doing today. Well, let, let, let's be real about it. I mean, you know, you and I both, both work out from home quite a bit. On those sessions uh, that I'm maybe not feeling particularly motivated, I could do a full warm up. I could do a full skill practice. I could do a cool down. Does that stuff happen? No. Mm -hmm. Would it happen if I was in a more structured environment? Absolutely. Would it probably be a better outcome? More than likely. So I think that's reason enough right there. Like you said, it's not the question of could I do it? It's, it's are you and did you? So that's that. And then secondarily, I think that there's tons of these things like not to get stuck on the, the 5k run, but there's plenty of meat on the bone there that I think the average person doesn't engage with. And I would go so far as to say that sometimes the lazy trainer or affiliate owner doesn't choose to engage with either. You come in for a 5k run day, that's a perfect example of what we talked about some time ago. I can't remember the episode number uh, mm -hmm. about movements that are not coached enough that's an awesome opportunity to really dial in and spend 15, 20 minutes working on running technique, getting people in the mindset that this is a technical exercise, that you can improve that technique and see a tangible benefit right away to your, your output, um, and then go run the race. That's something certainly is not going to happen if you're left to your own devices. It, never mind if the 5K happens at all, the technical end of it that sort of thing, the skill practice of it is, I mean, it's like approaching zero that that's going to happen. So. I was, was going to say, if, you, if, you, if the workout of the day was just come on in, we're going to practice things for an hour, right? that would probably be a low attendance day in most facilities as well. If it's not yeah. even a quote unquote workout, I mean, come on, you know, nobody wants to go in there and just practice for an hour. Or so I, you know, hey, I'll push back on that a little bit. And I've most definitely seen affiliates model their weekly programming with a known day in the middle of the week that is basically just a skill day and kind of active recovery. And I've seen those classes be really well attended. Oh, you know, so that for makes example, me happy. Yeah, for example, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, you're going to get your normal dose. Friday, Saturday, you're going to get something, you know, hot and heavy for the weekend. Mm -hmm. But Thursday, it's accepted that that's going to be hey, we're going to practice some of these skills. It's going to be a lower intensity. We're not there to get beat up necessarily. It is practice session. And I've seen that be really successful. The key seems to be making it known that this is a thing and it's an important thing. If it's just perceived as like, oh, it just shows up, well, then some people might not see the utility of it. But if, if the trainer and the affiliate can put that message out early and say, this is why we're doing it. And this is why we're sticking to our guns that every Thursday, for example, is this thing, you can start to get that buy-in. And, and that kind of dovetails me into one of the points that I had. It was actually way down my list, but, but I think education for your members over the long haul as to why it's important to work weaknesses, why it's important that some of the quote, fun stuff, um, is not always in every single workout. If you can get that message imparted to people, you're one step closer to having them show up to do the thing. Mm -hmm. So that education piece is important. And it doesn't mean that you need to sit down with somebody and give them a dissertation on CrossFit every time they come into the gym, but little pieces every session, little theory bits that add up and stick in people's brains until finally one day they're like, oh, you know what? 
I haven't run in a long time. It's important that I show up and do this run. Mm -hmm. That's what you're aiming for in the long run. That's, I have that exact point there as well. Um, you know, we are getting back for a second to what you said about affiliates having a practice class, let's say once a week, and it being well attended. People don't like to be labeled or put in, in boxes, so to speak. Okay, so I, mm. will, I will now do that unpopular thing. If I was to <laughs> label that group of people, for me anyway, uh, if I walked into some affiliate and I knew that it was the practice day and I saw yeah. 15 or 20 people in there just bettering themselves, in my mind, I would say, these are the people that get it. Like they get it. They understand that days like this are so critically important and move the needle and, and they're giving themselves mm. that incredibly precious time and instruction to actually improve without the, the clock running and huffing and puffing and trying to think if you pulled a little bit early and you're clean right in the middle of grace. I mean, this is, I'd be like, <laughs> yes, it would make me so happy, quite frankly, to see those, those people doing that because I would expect those people, if they continue to show up, to be wildly better athletes in a year's time. And so that's, that's yeah. really cool if, if an affiliate can create that culture and, and yes, you know, one of the points that I had exactly like you did, and I, I put the word why in all capitals, I was like, tell them why, you know, mm -hmm. tell them, you know, there are some people that just, Hey, I trust you. You're the coach. Today's a 5k. Roger that. Let's go do it. Tomorrow's this Roger that. Let's go do it. Then he, you know, you've got your foot soldiers that will go ahead and do that. But then, you know, you've got some people that are maybe a little more contrarian or just you know want to like him you know, yeah i hear you talking but i want to know why what you're saying makes sense and those people will really really enjoy because you have a reason to do what you're yeah. doing it's not arbitrary and random it, it has a purpose and a sequence and it's intelligently thought out and everything is this beautiful symphony ideally in programming where one thing layers upon another to hmm. drive the athlete forward and when you when you tell them why you're doing certain things, and you didn't just pull this out of a hat, you're going to get probably some buy-in from those individuals, and they're going to show up a whole heck of a lot more. And, and much like you said, you, you know, depending upon your audience, no need to use anything that's a triple word score and Scrabble and big scientific <laughs> terms. Just talk to them. This is, this is why this works. Hey, you want to be fitter, right? You want to jump higher, run faster, lift more weight. You want to get more rounds in city. Let me tell you how you might not think that a 5K or 10 by 100 meter sprints or strict pull-ups does that. Here's why. And if you want to be a better athlete, we can do this thing, you know? And, and I personally um, like that because I like to know, I mean, obviously a little bit of a CrossFit nerd, like I like to know why it is that we're doing what we're doing. And then once mm -hmm. the little light bulb in my little head goes off, you got me. I'm there. I'm in. And, and, and even if it's something I don't quote unquote enjoy, I'll understand the value of it and the long term benefits. And then you've got, you know, you've got another loyal supporter. Yeah. And I would say that in that piece, there is nothing wrong with, I guess, admitting to people that this might not be the most exciting, compelling thing <laughs> that they want to do. You don't have to. I don't think the, the name of the game in this education piece is trying to convince somebody of something that it won't be. It may not be your favorite session. That's okay. Just accept that we're all going to do it together and it'll suck less because we're doing it together. But hey, this doesn't have to be your favorite thing. That's okay. Comma, we're still going to do it. <laughs> I think that's the real message that needs to come through is, hey, fine. You don't ever want to be a 5K runner, and that's not ever going to be your favorite thing to do. I, I'm not here to tell you that you need to change your mind on that. But I will always argue the utility of it. And if you're trying to tell me that you can be as complete uh, in your fitness by omitting these things, well, uh, you're wrong. It's just not the case. Yes. And, and that little chat that we're talking about that can happen daily, a great time for maybe affiliate owners to use that class is over, maybe you've got that final 10 minutes, everyone's rolling yeah. around or stretching or in an ideal situation, maybe putting their gear away, you know, and you've just got some time, the music's turned down. And you can just, again, tell them just little nuggets of education on a regular basis. Yep. It, it will 
it will get into their heads eventually. And you, maybe you can even turn into a bit of a competition, right? Because CrossFitters are profoundly competitive in general by nature. That maybe yeah. you have, in addition to the workout of the day, every day or once a week or a few times a week, you just have the question of the day and write it on the dry erase board, you know, and you say, the CrossFit nerds will probably love answering it. And then the non-nerds won't like getting beaten by the CrossFit nerds. And maybe they'll start <laughs> to chime in every now and then. But you could write questions. Why do we sprint? Just that's it. You know, or, or write a question that's a total trap. Are strict pull-ups better than kipping pull-ups? Because mm. then you have to define what is better. Even mean, that'd, that'd be a great trap. You know, why does strict strength matter? What are, you know, what is intensity? Just write that on the board. What is intensity? Or write, how yeah. much time should you rest between a seven by one back squat? And just, just, and that little spark of competition and, you know, some people won't be interested, but those that will, you'll little bit by little bit raise the fitness IQ of your community. And as the fitness IQ of your community increases about what the CrossFit methodology is and, and it works, you know, you and I are both here because it works better than anything that we've found on planet earth. Well, then they'll actually understand, ah, yeah. I know why we're working our LSIT. It's actually going to help my deadlift. And I really <laughs> love my deadlift. So I hate the LSIT, but I love my deadlift. Okay, fine. Let's do some LSITs. You know, and, and that's a cool place yeah. to get to, but it takes some time. Yeah. Well, the second thing I had here uh, after the education piece was a little reflection from the trainer or affiliate owner to check their own program. And part of that is you know, if you're catering your program all the time towards the taste of what individuals want, then you're going to be trapped by that when you deviate from it. And that's a tricky place to be. If you're like, yeah, of course, you can have candy for breakfast every morning. Mm -hmm. And then the morning you don't offer candy for breakfast, it's it, it might not even be that far away from candy, but it's going to be a total meltdown because it's not what's expected. So sometimes you got to make sure that your program is honest in the sense that it does give a full rundown so people are expecting that at certain times and when they do get something that is maybe less palatable it's not so far out of the realm of what they've done that they're like why 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 am i doing this um so i think taking a step back and reviewing like what are you giving people on a regular basis can be really helpful and on the other end of that there are a million ways that you can cook a less interesting day to make it compelling you know, your 5K day doesn't need to be this just, ah, everybody show up, we start the timer and we hate it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, with a little creativity and a little bit of, um, you know, presence and attitude to borrow from the, the CrossFit Level 2 uh, material, you can make a session that doesn't seem to be uh, somebody's cup of tea on paper a really awesome experience. Um, and that, you know, that, that can be what you include around it as part of the warm up, the skill practice, how you engage with the class as it's happening. There's a bunch of ways to skin that cat. So check your program overall, make sure that you're not just giving people quote unquote, the candy all day. Mm -hmm. So then when you take that candy away, it's like this abrupt change. And then secondarily within that session itself, make sure you're setting it up in a way that includes some compelling elements that bring people in, even if the thing itself isn't their most favorite. Yes. Good stuff. I've, I've I've got some of that written down as well. Your list is much more organized than mine today. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's I'm the one some, time I'm, I'm somewhat I'm never jealous. more organized than you. <laughs> I'm somewhat jealous about that. You know, this what you market this is the one time. <laughs> what you mentioned, I have um, a, a less polished way to say it. You know, kind of like if you feed them candy all the time, and you know, one of the one of the, the, the taglines I have at my affiliate is that we do what's effective, not necessarily what's popular. The popular mm. stuff will make an appearance. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But, but what is the primary focus is, is it effective? That's the question. Not is yeah. it popular? And that's what we're going to do. And, and that's, you know, ideally the culture that I've created there. And like you said, you, you can create whatever culture you want at your gym. And that's one of the wonderful things about a CrossFit affiliate. And the other part, which is, not the best bedside manner, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway, <laughs> which is I uh, care, but I don't care. Mm. And so I care about all the individuals following along. I care about them improving. I care about their progress. I care about them as human beings. I don't 
care that you don't like to run a 5K. Yeah. And that's kind of my job not to care about that. It's to care about your benefit, your well-being, driving you forward, explaining to you why it is. And I'm sorry, you can be grumpy today, but today's still a 5K. And just because you're grumpy, that doesn't change the training. So I care about so many facets of your life. But on a day that, you know, is effective and useful and fits beautifully in the programming, hey, I'm delivering to you the recipe, you know, that, that, that works. And as a CrossFit purist, you know, my, again, you can, you can have whatever kind of affiliate you want, but as a CrossFit purist, I almost just want to shout, hold the line, hold mm. the line, because if all the places on the world right now, like the last bastion of true <laughs> fitness, actual, like what fitness uh. really means, not just lifting, not just gymnastics, not just monostructural building or actually doing it all and giving all its true respect and understanding why. The last bastion of that is the CrossFit affiliate. And so as a purist, mm, I would said. just say, hold the line and educate yeah. them as to why you're doing it because we are one of the few places on earth truly driving what is real fitness forward. I mean, I'm talking like in the, from the What is Fitness article. And you're mm -hmm. not going to do that without a beautiful dose of variance. And that variance every now and then is going to make some people happy and some people unhappy. So that I'm off my soapbox now. Yeah, no, I like that. That's a, you know, keep, keep pounding the pulpit. Uh, I'm all <laughs> about it. Um, well, I got a couple other kind of more fun Please quick do. hitters on how to get people engaged on the days that maybe they don't want to be there. And uh, I'll start with one that's fun and kind of cultural. And this was always a big deal to me, both when I was um, coaching full time at various affiliates over the years and when I was on seminar staff and just generally when I have people that work out with me these days, uh, be it in my garage or wherever I happen to be. Um, and that is the culture of are you in or are you out? And it really just boils down to that. The question of what are we doing today is less important than are you going to show up or not? And mm -hmm. an extension of that, and this is something that I was always very staunch about, is I never posted workouts ahead of time. Just had no interest in that. Nice. Um, it was, I love it. it was, and with the express purpose to foster that idea, am I in or am I out for the day? Mm -hmm. Because that to me is the philosophical end state of being fit. I can show up and regardless of task, it's going to be a good day. Maybe not my favorite thing all the time. Maybe my favorite thing more often than not. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because I have enough breadth of capacity that I can show up and be fine. That's the mentality that I want to foster. So what I would recommend for some people that have... Um, you know, most, most affiliates have their programming ahead of time. People check it the night before or they put it up for the week ahead of time, whatever it happens to be. Go through deliberate times where you announce like a blackout period. I've seen affiliates <laughs> yeah. harness this really well. It's like, okay, the last week of every month is a blackout week. We don't post anything. You show up and you come in and you do what's on the board. I like and it. And we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to have a big lead up. And it's fun and it becomes an event and it, it starts to build this culture of, hey, it doesn't matter if it's what I want to do or if it's not, I'm going to show up and give it my best shot. Yep. And Showing if it's up. expected like that, people start to build tolerance to it. And that gives you that little bit more wiggle room, that wedge in the door to start getting people in that mindset of like, yeah, it's okay if I show up and it's not something I want necessarily. So the blackout week where you don't post is a great introduction to that kind of mindset. I'm a big, big proponent of that. If, if, if it's too harsh a step to just say, I'm not going to post my workouts, then hey, make it an event, do it periodically, get people used to it, and use those opportunities to slide some things in that maybe aren't as popular. So that's, that's my one strategy there. I got a couple more, but I want to hear your thoughts there. I know. I, I think that's cool. I mean, that is... To some degree, just quintessential CrossFit, quite frankly. You know, the unknown, you are showing up for the unknown and the unknowable. And you're going to make it happen. And no, no matter what it is, you're going to be good, right? Because you can scale, you can modify, you can tweak it, whatever yeah. it is, show up. And, and there might be some 
maybe some anxiety initially from showing up and not knowing what it is. But but then once you get that over the board, okay. it, it might actually be freeing in a way. You know, yep. because I guess I guess some people might show up dreading because they don't know what it is, and some people might show up not having any dread because like hmm, I don't know what it is. Might be great, you know. So it, it's uh, I, I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. I would really like to I would like to see in the comments if affiliates have played with that, or if they'd be open to playing with it, or if they do it in the future, just just post and let us know how it goes because that's really cool. Yeah, I yep. would. I've got a little thing uh, to potentially work in, but before I do that, you know, you mentioned if you've got somebody working out there in your garage, which which might be, I bet there's a bunch of people listening to this who their dream would be to work out in their garage with you. I mean, just let's I mean, go. I mean, let's go. So the question <laughs> is, is there a name for the garage gym that you work out in? Right now? I mean, yeah. my, my current, at the current place, it's the holdover from the last place, which is the Tuxedo Social Club. My, <laughs> the old neighborhood I used to live in was called the Tuxedo. And so that was my, uh, my little workout club. And so it's I a still have that name. Yeah, I still have the name. Uh, I've got a banner actually above the the one that you guys see behind me here. But uh, it's a fantastic yeah, name. I had to bring that so, up just because it makes me so happy. Um, yeah, yeah. The the little thing I was going to say to work in some. Uh, let's take a, for example the strict work. Okay. Now yeah. I understand, and this is this is another rabbit hole that we won't go down, right? Because what I'm going to recommend right now will most of the time for most people slow them down in a workout, which thereby reduces their intensity, which if you're geeking out, you're like, well, I don't want to do that. That's the holy grail of getting So why would you ever recommend that? So that's a whole rabbit hole we could go down as to why it makes Mm. sense to do that every now and then. But if you did a workout like it's a multi-round workout, let's say three or four rounds, and and every time you come in, let's let's take Helen, three rounds for time, um, pull-ups and kettlebell swings. And is it, it's 12 pull-ups per round, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe when yep. you come in, you're going to say, hey, I want you to do the first six pull-ups strict and the next six you can kip, you know, and, and now that may have to vary a little bit, you know, for some folks based upon what it is. But you could do something like that. And maybe somebody's like, well, uh, yeah, I could do that, but I'm going to have to do two quick sets of three. Like I'm going to be off the bar for 10 seconds, shaking my hands off. Then I know I can get the next set of three come down, shake, and I can get the last six kipping. But but that's 20 more seconds, right? Because I could just stay in the mm-hmm. bar and kip all 12. So now you're asking me, I'm, I'm 20 seconds slow per round. You just <laughs> you just killed my Helen, right? <laughs> you, know, you know what you did to me on the leaderboard? Every now and then, you know, intelligently sprinkled in at some nice intervals. So you can do things like that. We are working the strength work, under fatigue, in a breather, everyone's happy. And those will drive the needle forward and, and improve people's pull-ups or whatever other strength it is that you're trying to do. So there may be some times where you can give people little chunks to do in a certain way. And if it's ring dips, hey, the first, we get 21 ring dips, it's 21, 15, nine, mm-hmm. you're going to do the first 10 strict, and then you're going to kip the next 15. And there's here's what you're going to do in the set of 15. Here's what you're going to do in the set of nine. Everybody will still be okay. Even if the clock runs <laughs> a little bit longer than it normally would, there are some ways to work that in and and ideally have people enjoy it. So just kind of give that a whirl if you want. Yeah, for sure. And and so kind of my second tactic here, which I think should be used sparingly, it's kind of the harsher extension of not <laughs> I, posting I, your workouts. I can't workout. wait to hear. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful with this one. <laughs> so proceed at your Break own risk. Break glass in case of war. <laughs> yeah. But I am a huge fan of every once in a while, the old bait and switch, oh. where you got something on the board. Hey, we're going to do a five by five deadlift. And you show up <laughs> and it's a 5K row or a 5K run or a 10K run. Uh, why every once in a while? You yes, gotta, sir. You, gotta, you just yes, sir. pull the surprise. And then you make it again. You make it a fun event. You're like, all right, guys, you guys at the 6 a.m. class, don't let the cat out of the bag for the nooners. Don't let them know. It'll be fun. And then everybody has that kind of commiseration at the end of the day. Like, I can't believe I got duped by it. You know, and you can build that in into a fun experience that gets that taste of the thing that maybe they wouldn't have showed up for otherwise. Now, again, you got to be careful with that because you don't want to, you don't want to erode the trust that you build up with your members. But if you handle it, well, once in a while, it can be fun to pull the old bait and switch. 
the bait. Just be careful. And then, <laughs> and then what you'll see on that day is all the people at the 5 p.m. class who get tricked. There'll be a few that that act like they're hanging around just to see the 6 p.m. Yeah, exactly. get switched. Like, That's right. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, you know uh, part of, well, I this might have happened um, in my little soapbox speech a little bit ago, mm. but also just part of the education piece and how processors are competitive. Most people are in your gym because they want to improve. And if they are avoiding some of the quote unquote not fun stuff, right? However you define that. Well, that that by its definition means there is some piece of the pie that you are intentionally avoiding. And if somebody truly understands the methodology and truly understands that the body is one piece and how much the CrossFit methodology has shown that if there is don't get me wrong, functional movements are important, intensity is important, but the beauty and power of variance and in variance improving things that you're already good at and, and variance improving your fitness in ways that don't make sense and people have a tough time understanding why, you know, there, there's an old thing, why doing this shouldn't have improved my deadlift, but it did, whatever it happens mm-hmm. to be. If, if you are intentionally avoiding something, you have you have just some gains and improvement and PRs that are just dangling out there waiting for you. And probably what you need to get those is not spending more time on the stuff that you're already doing because you're already doing it. Sure. Is little by little embracing that variance and and ideally maybe with some of the techniques that we said earlier, exposing your clients to some of these things that are a little bit outside their comfort zone, maybe put a little bit of a frown on their face, but when they understand why, I just can't see you not having a a better, stronger, healthier, happier, fitter community down the road. So the mm-hmm. other, other part of the education piece is really, I'm just such a big fan of, of variance. It's it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous implement for driving fitness forward. So that would be just another tidbit yeah, to chat about I'll, at the end I'll, of the day. I'll say that to kind of temper my statement earlier where, yeah, objectively, if you're excluding some of these pieces, like a 5K run, like a 2K run, whatever, objectively, you're not going to be as complete as you could be with your fitness. Sure, However, sure. on the other hand, if you're talking about the average affiliate member who just, you know what, they're not interested in those days, but they show up diligently the rest of the time, I wouldn't stress too much about that either. There's going to be, to your point, because of the variance that they're experiencing, there's going to be plenty of overlap. They will be plenty fit. Oh, Is it optimal? Yeah. Perhaps not. But at the end of the day, it's oh, not yeah. the end of the world. It's. I think we did um, a, an episode a long time ago, like if, if you don't do handstand walks, if you don't do some right. other stuff, are yeah. you still doing cross? Still plenty to work on. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you're going to be a beast, like for yeah. sure. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so last one I've got here, and this is the old kind of sugar on top approach <laughs> where, where uh, you, you, you pair one that you do want to do with one that you don't. And I'll give you a, a recent example of this that showed up at the affiliate that I go to. And uh, the workout on, of the day was an old classic, a classic main site. If you look in the archives, you can see one uh, Zach Pine and Chris Spieler doing oh, this one at the track. I know what you're going to say. I know you can see the video. You can. <laughs> that's an old schooler workout. It's been around forever. It's, it's very simple. Yep. No. No uh, equipment required. You're gonna find a place to run. You're gonna set the timer up. You're gonna do five rounds of a 400 meter run and 50 air squats. That's it. Mm-hmm. Not too difficult on paper, but obviously very hard as far as the effort. Um, not a popular workout in in some circles. <laughs> <laughs> but on this particular day, what was paired with that was a couple of sets of heavy bench press. So it was, hey, we're going to come in, we're going to throw around some weights, it's going to be total bro time, and comma, then we're going to hit the pavement, and we're going we're gonna to knock out this 400 meter and 50 air squats. If you and eat you know your what? vegetables, you can have dessert. Exactly. Or, in this case, dessert first a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But, but the idea there is, hey, you know what, sometimes you give a little to get a little. And that doesn't mean that you need to be programming a lift and something else every single day. It doesn't mean that you have to have these multi-stage workouts, you know, every time that you're in the gym. But once in a while, if that's going to draw people in, they're like, oh, I get to do this fun thing and I still get my, Mm -hmm. my other serving on top of it. 
it's worth it. And so play with that. The, the purist might be like, oh, that's a, that's a lot to put into a session. Fine. So be it. Once in a while, it's worth it. So that, play that workout, I think it's a four rounder. I think it's four rounds. Oh. Um, I'm almost I'm almost positive. I think it comes out to a mile, but if somebody... almost certainly did a five round recently. They... <laughs> <laughs> There's some extra fitness for you. <laughs> yeah. I, if somebody should go find uh, that video. And I tell you what, if there was ever a pitch over the plate to Chris Feeler, oh man. <laughs> he's gotta be tough to beat on that workout for especially at that time. I mean, oh, he was yeah, just conditioning an animal. through the yep. roof flexible air squat range of motion capacity yep. i mean just because because zach is a ferocious athlete and fast no and question so yep. to beat zach on that workout there's not a lot of human beings that were going to do that i mean that's that's such a great workout such a, and that's another it one we might, have, we might have mentioned that i don't know if we did or not um i think the the episode we recorded last week was like fitness while traveling with friends to mm. work out and yep. we kind of threw some workouts out there as no equipment yep. no whatever i can't remember that, if you that's, mentioned a, that's that one. a good one but that one you will not be shortchanged you will be no nope. you'll be good to go so yeah that's that's it i've got nothing else on the topic but if you've still got any uh, bullet points no, or you I can think, hit them up uh, i think i'm good there i think you know make sure that your program is in order make sure your education is being sprinkled into your your people they understand the benefit of it once in a while, try to build that uh, mental durability that it's okay, that you don't know what you're going to do. You just show up and do it. So the blackout week can be a really uh, useful tool for that. Once in a while, the bait and switch can uh, <laughs> You've be got a all useful the tool. You get the blackout week, the bait and switch, and the sugar on top, right? <laughs> yeah, and exactly. And then, and then, hey, sometimes the medicine goes down a little bit better with some sugar. <laughs> so there it is. That's my uh, that's my list. <laughs> that's, I think it's I think it's fantastic. Well, hopefully, uh, whoever was the affiliate owner that posted that question, I I truly hope this served you well in some way, shape, or form. Keep the questions coming. Obviously, you know, we, we read the comments, we check them out, and they do influence the future content of the show. This is more your, you know, this is all of your show. It's not my show and Boz's show. This is all your show. And so, as always, we appreciate the support. Go to the BTWB YouTube channel, find this show, and then post in the comments, what do you, you know, this is what I think, this is what Boz thinks, great. But what do you think, especially if you're running a gym, what have you found works well to get people to buy in, so to speak, and to understand that not every day has to be the most fun workout that they've ever seen? Give us your tips, give us your tricks. Everybody will get better together. So once again, for Adrian Bosman, I'm Pat Sherwood, and we will see you next time.